Welcome back to a new YouTube video. Today we're going over a completely new skill. Of course, all three of those difficulty levels, evaluating statistical claims. So the key foundation of these is that we are going to be drawing a conclusion based off of uh, survey data and we make sure that we can't do make a conclusion that we don't have the evidence for that's kind of the gist of these questions let's go ahead and get started make sure to subscribe if you haven't already jamal surveyed a, re a random sample of college students in texas about whether they own a desktop computer the results of the survey are most representative of which of the following population so random sample of college students in texas it's not gonna apply to high school students or college students in the US. The, the most representative population of uh, the results of the survey representative to which population is going to be college students in Texas because it surveyed college students in Texas. On to our next question here. City Councilwoman Kelly wants to know whether the residents of her district support a proposed school redistricting plan. Which of the following survey methods would allow Councilwoman Kelly to make a valid conclusion about whether the residents are of her direct district about whether the residents of her district support the proposed plan well as said here she needs to ask the residents of her district so that's the best to just ask 200 residents of her district randomly on to this question vincent surveyed a random sample of new mexico residents age 18 to 24 about how that much they typically tip at a restaurant, the results of the survey, which, most representative of which population? We have New Mexico, and then we have this age range. So these two combined are going to make up how the results are most representative of which population. It's going to be New Mexico residents aged 18 to 24. So make sure we can't make any claims that aren't backed up. Here we have Albuquerque. Well, Albuquerque isn't even mentioned in our blurb, so we can't make any conclusions about them. Last question for this foundational difficulty level. A school district has 40 schools located in different neighborhoods of city Y. A researcher for the school district believes that teacher job satisfaction varies greatly from school to school. Which of the following sampling methods is the most appropriate to estimate the proportion of all teachers in the school district who are satisfied with their jobs? So we can't do A because it just needs to be random from the 40 schools. Uh, selecting five teachers from each school at random and then surveying each uh, teacher selected. Yes, this randomness part is very important in order to determine a survey. Uh, here, we're just selecting one of the 40 schools at random. If you survey one school, you can't apply that to the other 40 schools. So C is going to be incorrect. And then first, no, that's not random. We need to have random data collection in order to draw conclusions based off of that data. Let's move to our medium difficulty level. A research article Armari was reading showed that middle school students with more nutritional knowledge tend to eat more fruits and vegetables and middle school students with less nutritional knowledge tend to eat fewer fruits, fruits and vegetables based on the results of the study, which of the following is a valid conclusion. So it's really important that middle school students, so eating fruits and vegetables gives middle school students more nutritional knowledge. No, this uh, blurb was talking about the opposite. More nutritional knowledge leads to middle school students eating more fruits and vegetables. Uh, there's a positive association with nutritional knowledge and fruit and vegetable consumption. That means that as students have more nutritional knowledge, they consume more fruits and vegetables. That seems quite reasonable. There is no association. No, we just talked about the, the conclusions that we could draw. Or a student who has a lot of nutritional knowledge must. Must. We can't draw a conclusion off of that. Of course, if you know a lot of nutrition, you can still go out and eat some fast food. So that does not... Uh, apply for answer choice D. Answer choice B is the most reasonable out of all of these. Okay, on to this next question. Near the end of a re local radio talk show, the host invited listeners to respond to a poll on the show's website that asked, are you in favor of the city's new restrictions on the types of flags homes can fly? At the end of the show, the host reported that 22% responded yes and 72% responded no, which are following best explains why the results are unlikely to represent the sentiments of the local population. Not because they're not equal, um, not necessarily because they don't add up to uh, 100%. Not all the listeners of the talk show responded to the poll. No, once again here, 
they were not a random sample. In order to draw conclusions about a population, you have to have a random sample of that exact population. We're talking about the city's new restrictions. Is everyone in the city listening to the local radio talk show? No, so we can't draw a conclusion based off of that population. Wholesome Food Company asked all students on the baseball team uh, the question, do you like broccoli? 15% answered yes. Uh, based on this data, which of the following conclusions is valid? Let's break down these answer choices and see if they are valid. About 15% of the students at Richmond High? No, we're just talking about the baseball team. Uh, exactly 15% of all students on the baseball team at Richmond High like broccoli? Maybe. Uh, baseball team at their rival? We don't know, we, have, we haven't surveyed their rival, can we? so we can't make a conclusion based off of them. And then 15% of students on the baseball team like all vegetables. We only surveyed broccoli, so we can't draw that conclusion at all. Uh, answer choice B just states exactly what we found. Uh, out of the survey, 15% of those students who answered the survey, which were on the baseball team at Richmond High, this high school that those baseball team students were at, liked the broccoli. That is the only conclusion that we can draw. Raina runs a restaurant. She noticed that over the past 48 months, as the price of beef increased, so the price of avocados also increased. Based on this information, which of the conclusions is valid? There's a positive correlation, increase, increase. Um, there is a negative correlation between beef prices and avocado prices. We, we know that that's incorrect. That means as one increases, the other one decreases. That is not what uh, this sentence showed. The increase in beef prices caused avocado prices to increase. The increase in avocado prices cause beef prices to increase. So this is the relationship between correlation and causation. We need to know that since uh, beef and avocados are correlated, that does not mean that one causes another. I mean, just think, if the, increase, if, the beef price, if the beef prices increases, that does not directly cause the avocado prices to increase. It could all be as a result of inflation and everything is increasing. We can't draw that direct causal relationship, but we can say that they are correlated. So answer choice A is correct. A study was conducted to compare two bio biology study aids, an online game and a physical flashcards. 80 middle school biology students were selected at random and the parents chose which study a aid their child used. The results show that the students who used flashcards had significantly better outcomes than students who used the online game. Based on this information, which of the following statements are true? Flashcards are a more effective study aid than the online game for all middle school biology students? No. The lack of random assignment means that there could be other explanations for the study result. So the lack of random assignment is that because their parents chose which study aid the child used. That means that the parents might have used flashcards with their students before. There could be an inherent bias or confounding factors that could um, lead to other results, other explanation for these study results. So B seems li likely. The lack of a control group, no, as long as there's random assignments. Uh, we don't need the control group for this specific study, and none of the statements are true. We know that B is correct, so let's uh, roll with answer choice B. There was no random assignment there. Okay, on to our next question here. A company wants to study the effects of its new protein shake on muscle gain. 50 people who exercise regularly and 50 people who do not exercise regularly were selected for the study. The people who do not exercise regularly were given the shake, while the people who exercise regularly were not. The study results showed that on average, a group that received this shake did not gain any muscle mass. Based on the information provided, which of the following is an appropriate conclusion? The shake will not help anyone. No, the, it, the sh shake may not help uh, people who do not exercise gain muscle. The shake can only help people who exercise regularly gain muscle. Well, they didn't test that, so we don't know. And people who do not exercise regularly are likely to gain more muscle mass without the shake than with the shake. Well, they didn't test uh, people who do not exercise regularly without the shake. So that means answer choice C uh, is also incorrect, meaning that none of the conclusions are appropriate. 2016, a polling agency surveyed 5,000 U.S. adults with full-time employment who were selected at random and asked each of them, are you satisfied with the benefits provided by your employer? Of those surveyed, 68% uh, responded they were satisfied with the benefits provided by the employers. Based on the results of the survey, which are the following are reasonable conclusions? Remember, we can only apply this conclusion to the population that it tested. U.S. adults with full-time employment. So let's see, about 60. Uh, eight percent of all U.S. adults, no. So answer choice one is going to be incorrect. Um, about sixty-eight percent of all U.S. adults with full-time employment are satisfied with the benefits provided by their employers. This seems valid. Answer choice two seems valid because with full-time employment, that's why we tested U.S. adults with full-time employment. 
and about 68% of full-time employees at any U.S. company are, are satisfied with the benefits cut provided by their employer. So we can generalize this, but we cannot specify this because we don't know exactly what each of these companies are. That means answer choice 2 is the only one that is correct here. Uh, now, let's move on to our last question. To determine whether treatment C is effective for pain management, a study was conducted. From a large population of people experiencing chronic pain, 150 participants were selected at random. Half of the participants were randomly assigned to receive tra treatment C, and the other half did not. Participants who received treatment C reported better pain management than those who did not, based on this information, which of the following is an appropriate Conclusion, treatment C is likely to improve the pain management of people experiencing chronic pain. This seems quite valid because of a large population of people experiencing chronic pain. The people were selected at random and then there was a random assignment. So this means that the data might be valid. Treatment C will cause multiple underlying causes for pain. They didn't test this. Treatment C will improve the pain management of anyone. No, just people experiencing chronic pain. Treatment C improves pain management more than all other available treatments. Well, I didn't uh, study all other available treatments. So that means A is the only conclusion that we can draw based off of this. This is our evaluating statistical claims um, skill. It may not be super math orientated, but it is extremely important. You'll definitely see a couple of questions related to this skill on the exam. If you have any other questions, make sure to leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. I'll see you guys when we start going over our unit test review for the foundational, medium, and advanced difficulty level of this unit 2 of digital SAT math. I'll see you guys in those videos. Goodbye.